All right, so when we worked on the code on Friday, we were not able to get the test to run, but thanks to James, he figured out the configuration that we needed so that we could get Jest functioning correctly. And it basically was that we needed to go into the package JSON file and add this code right here. So um, thanks to James, we can now run these. Uh, they still don't work, but they run. So let me show you. Um, I actually went and made a few more changes that are really minor, uh, just a couple of things to make note of. Whenever we build a React component, you're probably just going to import React from React most of the time. Uh, in the situation with our tests, we actually needed something from the React add-ons. So you can't just import React, you have to import React from React slash add-ons and that gives us access to the test utilities. And there are a number of add-ons to React that are kind of considered in development, but tend to frequently get used even in production software. So they have things like, um, there's a performance utility, I think, in there, and then the test utilities, so those would be mostly for development. But for production, they have um, some code that helps you write the CSS if you need dynamic CSS in your components. Um, I can't remember the name of it right offhand, but that's kind of what you get from the React add-ons. Okay, so I did that, and then I went to run the tests, and I will show those to you here. Over. So now if I run npm test, takes it just a second, and it's going to fail. We're going to get this really nasty uh, output, which says... I couldn't find all of these things that I needed to run the tests. And if you look at the culprit, it's down in this navigation. It turns out that the React router makes your testing a little bit more complicated. So that's where I wanted to really dig in and start today. So there's this page um, out in the React router project in the guides, and I've shared that out in the test, uh, in the learning room. Um, so the React Router docs guides testing. And in fact, a lot of people have run into this problem. So it says, if you don't do this stuff, you're gonna get these errors, which are the errors that we just got. So you could do this in every single one of your tests, which is basically, you're gonna create this wrapper class that makes all of these things available by stubbing them out in the context, like this. But that's really ugly, who wants to do that and spread that across all of your tests? So instead, we're gonna follow the suggestions down here, and we're gonna try and drop this into our testing, into a test utility that we can then reuse across all of our tests. So here we go. Um, so maybe inside of the test folder, we're going to create a directory, call it utils. Uh, we'll have to exclude this from our just tests, but we'll do that later. Okay. So what should we name this? Maybe stub router context would be a good name, I guess. Okay, so now I can import um, the code that I need from that file into my test. So let's go get the code that we need. Uh, here's the helper that they recommend that we copy and paste. We'll drop that into here. Um, and I believe that we will also, let's just do it this way. We'll just need to export it. Hopefully this works. Give this a little bit more room. Okay, so import um, stub router context context from all right. So 
in theory, we should now be able to access this code. Let's run that and just see if we end up with some other weird failures in the meantime, or if we still get the same failure, which is what I would hope for. Um, okay, so we're still getting the same failure. That means our code that we just added doesn't introduce any more weird problems. All right, so now we should be able to use this stub router context. So I'm gonna bring that over into our code. Stick it down here for a second. All right, so we have this available to us by the fact that we imported it. We don't need the individual component, but we do need to do these two lines right here. Um, okay, so our individual component is this index, which does not actually need any properties, so we should be good there. So now what we need to do is instead of react.render, which is what they show us in the test that from the documentation, we're going to use this test utils render into document um, and do it this way. And we'll render it like this. I think that will give us the results that we're hoping for. Okay, so now let's go out and run the test again. All right, so now we have a different error, which is that React is not defined inside of the stub router context. So let's go take care of that problem. And I don't think we actually need the add-ons in here, so I'm just gonna import React directly. Let's try this again. Looks like we missed including function from react.prop types. Let's try this again. And let's get this one. All right, so make path, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to go and play around with this because it looks like there must be some missing elements from the documentation to make this actually work. I'm sure we can make some commits to contributions to documentation. Yeah, it's just, it's interesting. So, you know, in this first section, they show how to, how to add all this extra code that adds these methods um, by wrapping it up in, you know, we wrap it up in a component that contains the component that we actually want to test. And then they show this helper method but it's missing pieces. So like up here, for example, they import function from React prop types, but then they don't down here, so you can't just copy and paste that in. Um, and then this make path is giving us an error. Child context type make path is invalid. It must be a function. So then if I go look at the code, make path is a function from prop types, but that's still not working. And maybe this is overriding it, but that should still act as a function, I believe. Component, props, stubs. So the only thing we're passing in is the component. Should work just fine.
Okay. Well, I will play around with this and maybe get in touch with Ryan to see if he has any ideas or maybe there's some more information around uh, the internet and I, I'll get this fixed. And then we can talk more about testing tomorrow so that we can then begin writing more sophisticated React components. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, you guys. Sorry that wasn't more helpful, but we're getting there.